Good morning, students. We are going to learn about the water technology. Water is the most basic and a fundamental component of life. It is the most wonderful substance gifted by nature to all the living beings on the earth. Among the three essential things of life, water comes under the second. Second, the most, the first most important thing is air. Without air, it is not possible for to sustain a life. Whereas once air is available, then we need a water. Without water, it is not possible to lead our life. Health and wealth of any country is depends largely on availability and uh, utilization of uh, quality water. Then the the seventy two percent of the earth earth surface is covered by water. The distribution of this uh, earth surface uh, covering of earth surface is like this. The ocean cover covers about ninety seven point twelve percent twenty three percent, whereas uh, <coughs> the glaciers are going to cover about two point one four percent, and uh, the fresh water available in the uh, earth surface is 0.03% and 0.01% is available in another form. Then, the, which are the main sources of water? So, there are two main sources of water. One is a surface water, another one is a ground water. The surface water is available in the form of a rain water, river water, lake water, and a sea water. The rain water is the purest form of a water. Once it, at once, at the point at where it originates, at there it is going to be highly pure but as it reaches the ground it will be get contaminated it will be get dissolved with the gases and sometimes even the suspended impurities are also, also going to be present whereas and the next comes the river water the suspended the the rain whatever we receive that re received water from the rain it will flow in the form of a rivers these rivers contain the dissolved minerals as we all know that water is a universal solvent so it contains the minerals. The minerals are maybe of a chlorides or maybe of the sulfates, carbonates uh, and the phosphates, nitrates. It may be a number of salts. These are the salts of calcium, calcium, magnesium, sodium, iron and potassium. It also contains the organic matters. The, uh, it also contains the organic matter, either it may be a dead animals, dead leaves or other small particles of a soil and a sand which are going to be present in the form of a suspended impurity. Then comes the lake water. It contains the dissolved minerals but a high quantity of organic matter is going to contain. So since it is stagnant, it remains at a one particular locality due to that the organic component is going to be more and the inorganic component is based on the area in which it is present. Then comes the last one, that is the sea water. It is the most impure form of a water. It is the most impure form of a natural water. It contains a dissolved salts like NaCl, sulfates of sodium, sulfates of potassium, bicarbonates of magnesium, and calcium. Along with that, it also contains the suspended impurities, soluble impurities, floating impurities, Almost all types of, all varieties of impurities are going to be present in case of a sea water. Then comes the second type of, uh, uh, the second source of water that is, uh, that is called as a ground water. Ground water, the water which is available under the, or beneath the uh, soil on the surface of a ground is called as underground water. So the underground water is digged off either in the form of an open well or in the form of a bore well. Or apart from this, this underground water is available in the form of a springs. So ground water, <coughs> either it will be, <laughs> it, it contains, uh, it, it, it is generally clearer in uh, appearance due to the filtering action of the soil or the rocks. And apart from this, it is going to contain a high, high amount of organic impurities. These impurities are, uh, the impurities of water are found in the nature and uh, it is never going to be pure and is associated in which, upon, in which it is available. It depends upon the where, the land, where the water well is digged. If it is in the plain land, then in that case, we are going to have the water resources going to be far away. Sometimes we are going to get a, a good quality of water, and sometimes we are going to get a sort of a sore, sore, sore taste of water. Then, then the question arises: What are the <coughs> impurities of water? There are generally four types of impurities. 
one is a dissolved gas impurities second one is a dissolved solid impurities third one is a suspended impurities fourth one is a microscopic impurity the dissolved gases the water if it contains the dissolved oxygen uh, dissolved uh, gases as it is we all know that carbon dioxide is going to be present uh, along with oxygen in a water if excess quantity of a carbon dioxide is present in a water then it will be turned as the <coughs> carbonic acid similarly if it contains if it contains the excess of sulfur dioxide or excess of oxides of nitrogen in that case it may be turned into a sulfuric acid and h2so4 apart from this it has the water has a capacity to dissolve ammonia and even the uh, hydrogen uh, hydrogen sulfide if hydrogen sulfide is dissolved in a water then in that case it will have a very bad odor and it is not usable then comes the dissolved solids so the soluble salt impurities that are present in excess are uh, <coughs> then if it is present in excess then we call that one as a dissolved sol solid impurities so these dissolved sol solid impurities will be in the form of oxides or it will be in the form of a chlorides or sulfates uh, sulfates or carbonates and bicarbonates if the dissolved impurities are in the form of chloride sulfates and all that thing then we say that the water is a hard water permanent hard water if it contains the bicarbonate then in that case we are going to say that water is temporary hard water apart from this it also contain the oxides of manganese iron and it also contain uh, manganese iron lead and arsenic and, and these are also going to be present in a water these are all because of the anthropogenic activity of the people anthropogenic gen activity of the uh, society will lead to the dissolution of these heavy metals if they are present in excess quantity then it is not possible to use that quality of that water for any of the domestic purposes that too particularly it cannot be used for drinking purposes then the third one is the suspended impurities the suspended impurities are nothing but these are neither floating on the surface nor they are settling at the bottom they are in between they are moving from bottom to uh, top uh, surface and from surface to the bottom they are not going to be settled they are not going to settle that easily such a type of impurity if it is present in a water then we call that one as a suspended impurities these are suspended impurities are responsible for the color and odor of a water there are two types of suspended impurities one is uh, one is uh, the inorganic impurity and another one is a uh, organic impurities so the clay soil case uh, clay soil and oxides of uh, <coughs> oxides of some of the metals are going to cause the inorganic impurities whereas the organic impurities are mainly contain the wood pieces disintegrated uh, particles of a uh, dead animals leaf fish bacteria algae protozoa etc etc these are going to contribute for the organic impurities so then comes the last one is microscopic impurities so the suspended impurities that contains the organic compounds which are derived from the decay of vegetables and animal matter contain the pathogenic bacteria these pathogenic bacteria and microorganisms that are present in a water causes the micro microscopic impurities these microscopic impurities are <laughs> harmful for the any living beings these are responsible for the water borne diseases these can be removed from the water either by boiling or by the chlorination or by the chlorination so this is about for the today's class